What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel with another EVE Online video. Today I'm back at you with another Abyssal Guide, specifically how to make profits in Tier 2 Filament with the Worm. For me this has been a 4-5 to five month quest to try to figure it out. When the last update came up, uh, the depth of the Abyss update, the Worm became really really hard to fit for Tier 2 Filaments, and we've finally figured it out. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified when the new videos come out. So in my last worm video that I put together, you guys saw this worm passive fit. So a fit for exotic filaments with really high thermal resistance so that we could take on the spawns that we thought were the hardest at the time, which is the Bedmac and the Kikimura. But then I went into the test server and tried to get those spawns as many times as possible. And what we figured out is that with a decent amount of manual piloting against the Bedmac and the Kikimura, as long as you fly away from them at first, handle the anchoring Damavex, and then kite them, you're able to handle them fairly easily. We also figured out that against the Marshall spawn, the regen on this fit was no problem at all. As long as you orbit it at around 20 kilometers so that you could retain enough speed to negate a lot of the missile damage that the Marshall put out. So once I had figured those parts out, I started working on putting together a video for you guys on how to take this fit into exotic filaments and how to handle most spawns until I came up against this spawn, the Watchman and Sentinel combo. So I really didn't expect that much DPS to come out of this spawn. And even with um, playing around with the orbit, this distance at which I could kite them and stuff like that, even at my maximum missile range, these guys would still hit most of their shot. And just the amount of DPS was too much and the fit couldn't handle it. And I died. So officially the fit actually doesn't work for tier 2 exotic filaments. And I'm not even kidding. Literally as I died. So I died. I'm on the test server. I died. I quit out of the game and I come back onto the main server and I have a new message. And it's this dude, Artenzo Vestendal. Artenzo Vestendal. Sends me a message and says, uh, hey, listen, I've seen a few of your videos. Um, here's a passive shield worm. So he runs T2 Gamma consistently with Omega skills. All right, so I said, you know what? At this point, I don't have a lot of other options. Let's take a look at it. So what I saw from this fit, uh, first of all, he had it fitted with the Inferno Fury missiles. Doesn't really matter. You know, the worm you get. If you have max worm skills, you get a 50% bonus to Inferno, Inferno or um, Kinetic missiles. And what we see here is a medium shield extender and then two small shield extenders, a power relay, purgers, and then actually gallows light missile launcher. And I played around with the fit. I tried to see if there was any way to improve it. There, there actually isn't. This guy took a lot of time to figure this out. Um, and he did an amazing job at it. There's not much you can do, potentially with some, some slightly higher power grid skills and a power grid implant, I could um, avoid using the Gallows Light Missile Launcher and maybe put tier two launchers. But the cost of the implant would actually kind of come down to the same thing. Since the Gallows allow you to use the tier 2 missiles, it doesn't really change much to your DPS. Um, he said with his skills, he gets 190 DPS. I get 221 DPS. And then the message, he also talks about how in Gamma Filaments, you're better off doing um, explosive damage. Well, the reality is that in Gamma Filaments and tier 2 Filaments, you're likely getting a 30% increase in damage from your explosive damage, but you're already getting a 50% increase to your thermal or kinetic missiles from the skills in the worm. So you're better off using thermal or kinetic missiles and then using um, warriors as the drones to use this fit. So obviously the fit looks great, but I had to test it. I had to try to put it up against the toughest spawns and find out what happens. Now, like I've explained in one of my previous videos, the problem with tier 3 filament is just the range of difficulty from all the different spawns. So you have a lot of spawns that are super easy to handle, like the Tesla spawns and stuff like that. Piece of cake. You don't even have to move. You can just fly directly to the cache and just hold position there and wait for every, everything to die. But the spawns that really needed to be tested were the Kiki, the Venmac, the Marshall, and the Watchman, the one that I died to with the other fit. The problem with the Kiki and the Venmac is that with this fit, you really can't outrun them. So you're going to be forced to take their damage. Their tracking is amazing. So in reality, even if you orbit the gate or whatever, which is what I recommend is orbiting the gate. But the reality is you could probably just stand still and the result would be about the same. So we had to find those spawns and find out how it worked out against them. So first of all, the Kiki and the Venmac. 
So for the Venmac, I decided to go after the Damavix first, but the reality is that it might be better off going after the Venmac B. And the reason why is because all of them have remote armor repair, but obviously the Venmac has a medium armor repair while the Damavix have a small one. So if you go for the Venmac first, he's only going to get reps from the Damavix, which is going to be very small amounts. If you go for the Damavix first, they're getting reps from the Venmac, which means higher amount of HP regen while you're fighting it. Overall, even with a wrecking shot from the Venmac, no problem at all to handle it. Same thing with the Kikis, no problem at all to handle the Kikis. Then I went up against the Marshal, and what I did with the Marshal spawn, the, the thing in Tier 2 Filaments is that you can get a single Marshal with a bunch of Frigates, or you can get two Marshals. And typically with the two Marshals, you're not going to get a lot of support Frigates since the DPS is already fairly high. So what I did for this spawn is I actually went in the reverse order that I would have normally done it. So I went after the Frigates first, and then did the Marshal afterwards, just to really test the fit. And no problem at all with this one either. Which really just left us with the Watchmen and Sentinel spawn test. And sure enough, not too long after, I got this spawn as well. The thing about the Watchmen and the Sentinel is that they don't have shield, so they don't benefit at all from the Gamma environment. You start off with such a strong advantage, and the tank had no problem handling it at all. Honestly, with this spawn, it's another one that you just orbit the gate at 5 kilometers, and that's good enough to handle all of the DPS that it puts out. With all of this done, I decided to put the fit through a final test when I came across the Devoted Knights. So as a lot of you guys know, the Devoted Knights in Tier 1 Filament typically gets the most skills against Caps. The amount of DPS that it puts out in the range and tracking is amazing. So when I came into the spawn with two Devoted Knights, I thought, you know what, let's stay at a decent range where they can hit most of their shots and let's see how long this fit can last before I actually have to kind of fly away and start kiting them. And as you guys can see, the Devoted Knights were actually targeting my drones for a little while and then they both started shooting me. Once my shield started getting to about 30%, that's when most of the region kicks in. And I was actually able to handle most of the shots that were coming in. Now, granted, if there was a couple of wrecking shots in there and stuff like that, I might have actually had to fly away. So even at 25 kilometers range, the second Devoted Knight was having a hard time hitting me in part because of the very, very small signature radius that this fit has. All right, so here's exactly how you handle all of the spawns with this fit. Let's start first with spawns where you orbit the gate at 5 kilometers. So that's going to be your Tesla spawn, your Damovic spawn, including Vila Damovic, your Lancer spawn, including um, the Lucid uh, frigates and stuff like that, the Venmac and Kikimura spawn, you can also just orbit the gate at 5 kilometer, and same with the Watchman and Sentinel spawn. On the Venmac and Kikimura, I suggest targeting those ships first and leave the Damovics alone until the end. And now the ones where you orbit the spawn. So the Marshal, you can orbit at 10 to 15 kilometers. That's what allows you to retain as much speed as possible, and that negates a decent amount of damage that comes in from the missile. The Spark Grip or Ember Grip or whatever Tessera, so the Battle Cruiser, the Drone Battle Cruiser, you'll always want to orbit those at 20 kilometers, so they'll always spawn in twos and sometimes with one or two support ships. So what I do is I start by flying away from them, kill the support ship, and I come back and I orbit the Tesseras at 20 kilometers. So you orbit one, sometimes the other one's going to get a little closer to you, but it really doesn't matter, they still won't be able to hit you. And you got to make sure, as usual, same as Tier 1 Filaments, pull the drones when they start getting aggroed, otherwise they're going to die fairly quickly. Now for the Thunder Child spawn, this one is a little bit tricky. You have to make sure you orbit the Thunder Child itself at 15 to 20 kilometer, and not because you're going to negate some of the damage that you take, but you're actually going to stop the Vorten Projector from chaining from you to your drones. So that way you're far enough from your drones because they're going to be orbiting the Thunder Child and attacking it at maybe like 2.5 or 3 kilometer distance. So by you being at 15 to 20, the Vorton Projector can't chain to the drones. For the Overmind, Deep Watcher, and Karen, just orbit them at 5 kilometer just to negate the damage that you take from them. Um, Devoted Knights, keep at range. So you can use keep at range 25 kilometer or keep at range 30 kilometer. Just be very mindful of obviously the border of the, of the pocket. What I do for that is I zoom out completely and I put the camera on the side that the border would be so I see the border coming from really far away. And as a general rule of thumb, I always say try to be ready to jump into the next pocket the second the spawn is dead. So this means as the spawn is almost dead, make your way to the cache, blow it up, loot it, go back to the gate and be ready to jump into the next pocket. It might not seem like much, but overall that can save you a minute and a half to two minutes per filament, which can equate an 8 to 10 extra million per hour. Once again, credit to Artenzo for the fit. Link in the description if you guys want to find it on the Abyss Tracker if you want to use it and log filaments onto it. Once again, if you've learned something from this video, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace out and fly safe.